How you doing guys? It's JP Sarri. Uh, once again I'm coming to you with another book review and this time I, uh, after a long long wait uh, uh, I'm back again into reviewing omnibuses and this is going to be the first omnibus of many omnibuses that I, I'm planning to review this year and this is a classic, definitely a classic of the 80s uh, a classic for Marvel fans and a classic for Daredevil fans and a, and a classic for Frank Miller fans this book actually is a reprint of the first omnibus that came out a few years back uh, and it was completely sold out it was very popular and actually i really like this omnibus this new reprint because he has some improvements to the book uh and as you can see one of them is just the dust jacket i really like the art it's completely different from a lot of the arts and the other uh, the other ones uh especially here on the side so it really doesn't really match up as well with the other ones but definitely it is unique and that's i think is an important thing to say about this book this book is totally unique and as you can see there's the art right there uh, uh from frank miller and it says right right there is a hero redefined and of course it's published by Marvel. Uh, it says collecting Daredevil 158 uh, to 161, uh, 163 to 191, and what if number 28. And of course you can see the price. It was 99.99 in the US and 112.99. When you take the dust jacket uh, off, you can see right there is that's a little story on the side. This is a classic Marvel here redefined but one of comics greatest visionaries. Talking about Frank Miller. And it gives you a, really a history of the character and, in this case, of the artist. And here is a biography of the creator. And as you can see right there, the creator has a biography of Frank Miller. Uh, of course, because this book pays homage to him first and foremost. And all his, uh, his, you know, all his career. Uh, here is, you can see Klaus Johnson. And, of course, Roger McKenzie that was the writer of the first part of the book. One thing I like about this book is the fact that actually the R that is in the dust jacket kind of continues on on the book itself on the on the, on the binder. As you can see right there, it has this very nicely, you know, nice color and nice finish. And he has the art right there of Daredevil. Beautiful art. I really love this art. It says Marvel in the corner. And as you can see right there, it says Daredevil. Uh, it has Frank Miller, Klaus Johnson. Uh, it, it is definitely... A, a really nice book and they really planned it well I like this the art of this um, you know Frank Miller once you open the book there is an introduction uh, as you can see it says no not a big thing uh, but there you see Daredevil uh, I like there I like it the color I like that I like the background of the New York City and you see the Twin Towers in the back uh, then after you switch the page you have really a list of all the people that participated here as you can see right there Writers, of course, Frank Miller, Roger McKenzie, David Michelini, he does one issue. And then you have Mike Barr, that he is the writer of What If. Uh, Pencilers, of course, you have Frank Miller, you have Klaus uh, Johnson. Uh, inking, of course, Klaus Johnson does a lot of the inking here. Uh, Joe Rubenstein and Terry Austin. And, of course, there's a lot of people involved, letterers, colorists, editors. And um, especially, I would like to give, um, I would say that one of the important persons here, I will say Danny O'Neill. Actually, Danny O'Neill was the guy, the person that really saw potential uh, in Frank Miller. He was the one that really gave him the chance. And as you can see, here is a list of all the different issues. Here. There is an introduction, of course, done actually by Frank Miller, written in back in 2000. Uh, pretty good. And in this, in this side, you also have another introduction written by Klaus Johnson uh, in 2001. Once you get into the book, uh, one of the things I really enjoy about this book is the fact that actually includes all the art that was done for Frank Miller during the 80s. Everything that he did as, as a writer uh, and first uh, as, a, as an artist uh, in, in the book. And I really like it. Here actually is a, in this, in the first part of the book, you're going to see uh, this is actually the first issue where actually uh, uh, Frank Miller is just uh, working as, as a, pretty much as the penciler for the book. And um, looking at it, you can see, um, you can see Frank had a little, he had a vibe that was special. He was very young when he started doing the work here. Um, he, if you know the story of Frank Miller, he started actually working back in the, you know, in the, in the 70s, uh, uh, very young, uh, especially he started doing some little stuff with DC Comics, uh, not well known, uh, no big time, uh, it wasn't really something, you know, he, he didn't have nothing really major going on in those days, uh, but his breakthrough was through, uh, in this case, through this, through Daredevil. He ended up coming to Marvel Comics and he was doing some minor jobs, you know, filling work, for, for the big company 
and it wasn't until actually uh, they they saw potential in him that they gave him a chance to start doing some work in this case for Daredevil. He started working with in this case with uh, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, McKenzie had a background as a horror uh, horror comic uh, book writer, a uh, person that worked with horror books, and that was his pretty much his uh, his path before going into Daredevil. Uh, he loved, and that's one of the things that happened within that time, that he infused a lot of uh, that, um, you know, that feeling of supernatural stuff within the book. Uh, to be honest, during that time in the 70s, uh, you know, if you know the story of Daredevil, you know, uh, he started back in 1964, he was created by Stan Lee, uh, Bill Everett, and actually had some input with uh, Jack Kirby. Um, and it was very popular. There were great artists, great people working in the, on the, in the title. Uh, you have people like Ramita Sr. Um, and others, uh, Wallywood. And uh, it was Gene Colan that really did the, the work with the book for, for a very long time. And those are the, the, the this is the, in, in, in a sense, the golden years of, you know, uh, uh, Daredevil. Uh, but within the, in the 70s, you know, there was a really, uh, Daredevil was, lost a lot of steam and um, beautiful right there the art of Frank Miller I really like, like when he does that you know I think that's one of the things that we are very memorable of uh, in this case of Daredevil is his acrobatic movements what he does uh, when he fights crime um, and you know definitely the art is very retro has a retro feeling even in this you know even though this was done in the early 80s he has a feeling and inspiration of the art back of the 50s and, and 60s and uh, even the the darker tone of the even the the the, the 40s um, uh, during, during those years uh, but you can see right there you can see right there black widow um, so in the, the 70s going back to what I was talking about in the 70s he lost a lot of steam you know the the book was not really selling uh, much because in reality there were so many artists working in the title that uh, definitely definitely the book lost that power and as you can see there is a classic here uh, beware of the Hulk this is a confrontation uh, between Daredevil and the Hulk this was actually the cause of many jokes inside Marvel because many people say well you know like they're not comparable how in the world are they gonna fight each other out uh, and uh, but yeah it is actually now a famous issue uh, presented here uh, definitely it's an inter interesting story not something that you would expect out of that but of course Frank Miller was uh, penciling and at that time uh, it's included in this book and uh, uh, you know and Frank Miller being young he took this opportunity he really liked uh, Daredevil as actually he wanted the job uh, he wanted to participate on the book uh, he, it was his call but actually the decision fell um, uh, on Marvel editors to put him into that place and as soon as he took it he just hit the the, the, the ground running he started doing stuff new stuff people started really paying attention to his art um, he was he brought that dyna, you know a dynamic view into the character but most importantly he brought a sense of certain darkness it was a dark tone and, and the way he was doing his drawing and later on when he started you know he took over the book as a writer he really brought that 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 sense that feeling into the story that really became you know make make, make him make uh, Frank a major name in the industry but most importantly also talking about Daredevil make Daredevil a, a household name and as you can see here is with the classic uh, outfit and the the yellow and, and red it's pretty cool I really like it it's definitely I, I definitely like Frank Miller during those early years I really like his art uh, one thing about Frank he has experimented with a lot of different art over the years uh, uh, he is a very experimental. He is the type of person that doesn't really um, sticks with one type of art. You know, he has a specific signature art that everybody knows. It's very, um, it's very artistic. Uh, um, uh, it, it is definitely has a lot of energy. It has some darkness to it. It has a lot of inspiration. Uh, Frank Miller has said it before. He did not grow up as, as a kid. He did not grow up like many other kids loving superheroes. His favorite uh, comic books were the ones of, uh, in this case, crime books. And of course, that love for crime stories was that really attracted him to Daredevil. He saw Daredevil not just, you know, as another superhero because definitely Daredevil doesn't fit the bill of many superheroes. Most superheroes are untouchable in one sense. They have a superpower, super strength, super speed. Um, but the devil is different. He has a limitation. The fact that he is a blind man really limits what he is and what he does. And uh, it really makes it very touchable. It makes him very relatable for most people. Uh, and he felt that that was a good story. The fact that he is 
fighting in a really enclosed environment as the city of New York really makes him more touchable uh, because in reality most of the readers of that time you know most people you know nowadays we live in a in an age and uh, uh, a time where people uh, you know travel you know through really you can travel through the the power of the internet anywhere and you 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 know but during that time the only thing that could take you places was reading books or comic books and especially growing up in the 60s or you know in the 50s as a, as a child and of course um, the, uh, in this case Frank Miller he brought that he loved the story and he created something that was relatable, uh, relatable for most people back in the 70s back in the 80s when he started working here people loved that you know really loved that because you know that's one of the reasons why I personally have always enjoy the books from um, in this case the story of their devil is because I can relate I feel that he is a man uh, at the brink of disaster It's a man that is, is pushing the boundaries of what is known and here's uh, there are many classic covers in this book you're gonna find this is a one really true classic and actually this was David Michelini he was actually uh, on this book after the last uh, issue that we just read was the last issue done by uh, Mackenzie and then you know in this case uh, Michelini does this part uh, it, it's an okay story uh, of course, still in this case, Frank Miller participating, drawing the book. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, he, there's there's a sense. You know, people during that time, you know, the, 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 the like the comic book is struggling. This comic book struggling because a lot of people, you know, within the many years with so many different writers, so many different visions, uh, a lot of the people were really losing uh, interest on in the book. You know, there was no direction, no sense of direction. But until that moment when uh, um, Frank Miller takes over and this is actually the one that changes the ball game it changes everything for the book uh, this issue number 168 as you can see is the introduction of Electra and this is the first book actually the first in this case issue where uh, Frank Miller becomes the writer of the book um, Frank Miller you know even through all the stuff and I can say about O'Neill um, he saw so much potential in the young man he saw petition in Miller. He saw that he had something different than the other artists, and he gave him a chance. Plus, this book was, and at that time, it was just bi-monthly. Uh, there were not much sales. It was uh, pretty much risking to get completely uh, uh, pulled off from the, you know, publishing. And you know, he said, you know what? Let's just try something new because the sales of McKenzie were not doing well. He was doing all kind of stuff, you know, some good stuff, some bad stuff, some mediocre stuff. Uh, the, you know, he was losing sense. Frank took the book, and one thing I can say about the, uh, Frank is that he has such a power power with words. He has power in the story. He is a good writer. Besides being a good artist, I think he is more memorable as, as a writer. He, he really created a story. He created uh, many characters, many things in this book. Uh, his art has a little darkness, uh, a little sadness in the eyes, um, but the story goes along well with the art. So when he started doing the job here, uh, you can see the shift. You can see a change. You can see that there is more. There is something that it, it is. He is reshaping the story. He's reshaping the lives of these people, uh, these characters, in, in a very powerful way. Um, it, it's giving life again to something that is already dying. Frank Miller, he added uh, a lot of things, a lot of details, a lot of um, important elements to the story. Uh, he created that really that friction between Daredevil and Bullseye that up to this day has been it's a you know it's a it's a part of the story everybody understands when everybody thinks about who is the largest enemy of Daredevil everybody has to think it's the Kingpin but also they they think about Bullseye um, very um, important elements to it you know he really centered the story he says you know we're not gonna try to you know bring Daredevil to compete with Spider-Man they're totally different superheroes uh, for a different audience so he decides to concentrate on the crime part uh, everything is about him fighting crime uh, the gangs of New York City uh, defending the people of you know Hell's Kitchen you know, on the entirety of New York City uh, he really gives that he gives a purpose to the story uh, instead of just he and trying to find the co the, the the cosmos or trying to go into to fight the Hulk he is really fighting uh, uh, more common enemies as you can see I like the silhouette of this uh, figure uh, going in uh, definitely he does that he brings so much great things and uh, like I said he, he brought in this case he 
broad kingpin that was just as you know in this case a villain for the uh, in this case for the spider-man for spider-man universe he brings it uh into be part of this story you know he is the kingpin in new york city of course he should be uh, connected toward you know with their devil that he is you know living in new york city and he's defending the poor and, uh, and the people that they are being abused but this gangs in in the, in the in the big city uh and i love the art as you can see the movement um i love the the style he has uh the inspiration he does the eyes of the characters you know he can you know bring emotions in the people you can see the emotions uh, he's good at it. He does a lot of close-ups. You can see that his panel work is clean, but at the same time, he does a great job in presenting a lot of uh, close-ups that really kind of give. give um they have they give this dramatic flair to the way he does things uh and you know you can go on and and everywhere you go you're gonna see that as an artist he's a great artist but especially you know he's not only writing he is creating a great story that is very relatable uh, and as you can see his backgrounds he doesn't do a lot of backgrounds when he does him he does him okay but he's not the type of person that spends too much time putting detail on it it is our simplistic way the way he does things he can see from panel to panel something that you're gonna see over the years with all his art uh stuff that he has done even from uh in this case the return of the dark knight 300 uh sin city there's a simplistic approach to things uh he concentrates more on the persona and really bringing the character in the persona's emotions you know that you can feel them you can sense them uh, i think the simplicity of the drawing simplicity can sometimes be very very powerful here you can see another uh, iconic cover there's definitely an abstract feel to this art. Uh, expressionist. Uh, he was uh, he loved to express, and his art is very expressionist. Uh, expressionism is actually big part of the way he does everything. And as you can see right there, the story continues on, and we haven't really touched big part of the story. Uh, definitely, this is a fantastic book uh, and as you can see there is more battles there's um, you know another cover all these covers i really love the covers they're fantastic um there's a lot of elements there's uh some elements that are you know a uh, fun uh, there's some some jokes in, in the story it is very smart it's witty and some sometimes uh, sometimes it's very deep um it's really plays well it's one of those books that you have to read once you start reading you cannot stop reading you will continue to continue uh, to read until the end there's some omnibuses there's some stories there's some books that i read and sometimes i get so bored uh, but definitely that's not the case for me when i'm reading uh, uh you know frank miller i love the experiment and he does as you can see right there you can see in the background the backdrop of new york city he doesn't like i, like I was telling you he really doesn't emphasize this you know um you know the backgrounds he doesn't it's not what he does, but he does something very important. He does a lot of experimenting. He experiments with the art. He does things, you know, to to bring him to to uh, to, um, to you know to be refreshing. You know, things that you know can really change and give uh, a lot of uh, power uh, to the the story. And he does a fantastic job, as you can see right there. I love this cover. Uh, as you can see, the gladiator, uh, the unified with Electra and their devil together. Uh, lovely. I, Another element that he brought into the book, he brought the ninja element to it. You know, um, for many years we saw their devil fighting crime and all that stuff, but we didn't really know exactly why where he got his ability to do what he did. As a, you know, not just a gymnast, but also to be a powerful fighter and hand to hand combat. He brought that elements. He brought part of the story. He explained things. Here you can see the end another good cover and you can see electra and actually beautiful curves right there he's pretty good i love the the way he does women uh, i think frank miller loves it the way he does his abstract art uh, especially with women he has a very very nice way to do it you know he is fantastic in, in the way he does those things and as you can see right there um I love it. It's definitely a great story that people should read. You know, that actually, if you are into uh, Daredevil, there have been so many great runs for Daredevil. The, you know, the first runs back in the 60s, of course, the Frank Miller run. And now, recently, w you know, we have the stuff that uh, Bendis did, the uh, Brubaker did. Uh, also, you have what, um, you know, uh, Mark Waite did. And they're all great, but definitely Frank Miller's is, in my opinion, of course, and the opinion of many people, especially people of my generation, I think uh, Frank Miller's run is the most important, most iconic one because it set the tone for the book for the years to come. 
Uh, it set the tone. It really gave, uh, really gave uh, substance to the story of Daredevil. And as you can see, I love the other uh, fights. I love the way he drove the fights at uh, Elektra fighting her enemies. As you can see, there is like a, a really um, there's lighter parts of the story. Uh, of course, fog, uh, foggy is a really one part of that. Uh, really, it's a lighter tone of the story. It gives a little human side of the story because if not, I think this with all these human touches and of course there you got uh, Iron Fist uh, and in this case uh, Luke Cage. And as you can see, if you don't add those little elements, a little tones of of, of you know of lighter, fun you know jokes and you know and that uh, comic com comedic feel to certain things, you know the book can get really greedy big time. And as you can see, this another classic cover right there. Uh, and beautiful actually I love the face I love the expression like I said the eyes the way Frank does eyes it's uh, definitely one of his uh, strong uh, suits this the Ben Urich uh, run is one actually one of my favorite ones in the book uh, I will not I'm not gonna tell you the story definitely I'm not I think it's something that I highly recommend to you to do uh, for you to do uh, but there's a lot of things here this is actually important person this is the wife of in this case uh, the Kingpin. Uh, you have to read it in order to understand it and you have not done so. Uh, but yeah, going into that is definitely, uh, I love the way he does. You know, you know, I can repeat it over and I'm probably going to do that over and over. There's so much power in the way he does things. Uh, uh, you know, Frank definitely did a major uh, change to this book. It really brought the book into to really uh, uh, an important place where actually their devil you know became a powerful powerful character in the mindset of many book readers as you can see a special double size issue this is a very famous issue this is a very uh, important issue in the in the lifespan of their devil see bullseye and electra one wins uh, one dies uh, definitely a classic cover uh, and you know you as you can see right there the, the everything that you, you you can see in this in this book, as you can see, Bullseye, um, it really works well. Sometimes a lot of books, a lot of writers, or some comics, they're trying to make big changes and they, they really come not as well, a little gimmicky. But Frank was making really smart choices. If you have been able to see the man, hear the man, or read some of his you know interviews, you'll find that Frank Miller is a very a smart man. Yes, there's a very dark tone in the way he does things, but what he does, Wait, what he does and and what he does, uh, he is the best doing that. He's one of the best. So here you can see, uh, after the death of Electra, another classic cover. I love the covers. Just the covers alone uh, are some of the best you will ever see. Uh, you know, and, and and this is something run here is actually uh, this is actually uh, the Punisher. Uh, definitely a fantastic, fantastic book all around. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to to get it. Uh, I'm very, uh, I really, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I had the opportunity to read it again, and I've been, you know, and I've been, it's been great. This another cover here. There's, you know, as you know, there is a diorama created by Saisha with of this battle, of course, between Daredevil and um, the Punisher. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful diorama, uh, and you know, I, you know, if you're a statue collector, I highly recommend it. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. This is another. Not another. This is a classic book. This is a classic cover. One of my favorite ones. Uh, one that a lot of people really, really uh, admire. Uh, I, I am one of them. Um, and as you can see, this actually here is when we can see uh, Johnson. You can see Claus really taking uh, the art, taking uh, big steps into the art. Uh, he, you know, that's something I can say about Johnson and Miller. Together, they are fantastic. They have a team that really did such a fantastic job together sometimes it's difficult because uh, for some artists uh, sometimes the art uh, trying to work with somebody that you hardly know because in reality you know you just working with an extreme stranger in most cases could be very challenging and sometimes that's what does that sometimes the art is not as great there are so many artists out there there's so many comic books out there but creating a team that can work things together uh, in this case uh, with the art and then the you know in this case the inking of your art it really um, is not as easy is not an easy thing and I definitely can say that uh, definitely I can say that 
he did a, such a great job. And then here you can see Jansen is now in charge, now in charge of the of the art. No longer just uh, you know he just not doing the just the inking. He's also penciling, and. A lot of people love it, and I definitely love what he did. I think he really working. He's much better with the backgrounds, as you can see. The city landscape is better, but he is very good. He did a very good job. He, the, the, this, you hardly understand to see the shift unless you're really paying too much attention. He really complimented the writing, and the, definitely, the, the, even in this moment, you can see the writing even getting better. Of course, because now uh, Frank is just concentrating and writing the story, developing the story, and no more into just doing the drawing. You know, the cat takes fifty percent of your brain power. He now is just concentrating into creating the story. Then Johnson, he's just doing something. He already been working with with Frank for quite a while, and you can see now he's able to experiment himself and develop some great ideas that really work well with the way the book was intended. You know, the the intentions of Frank in, into the story. Here you can see uh, Daredevil with uh, Black Widow. She's a big part of the story. And as you can see, uh, I like that actually. Uh, Johnson really doing uh, doing himself. Yes, in, in the beginning, you know, I can tell you one thing. If I have to choose between Johnson and have to and between Frank, I'd rather have Frank uh, drawing the art. But uh, definitely, Johnson was really working well. He has a bigger panels. He does his art a little different in that sense. He still does a little close-ups and he gets a little personal. Uh, uh, his art uh, is a little different in, in some ways, but it's closer and uh, he adds a little more tones, tonality into uh, and the color. So yeah, definitely I think they were doing great job together. You know, they really did good job. Uh, it really feels good, the story, what's happening here. Um, uh, you know, you can see that there's so many great covers. Again, every cover is just a favorite of mine, all of them. They're all, they're good, you know, definitely. You know, I'm just a sucker for this book and for the story of Daredevil. It's definitely one of the best omnibuses that you can find. And I can see that, you know, how beautiful the way, you know, all the, the shading done on this are. Definitely one of the best. I think John Johnson really was outdoing himself. He was getting better as long, you know, he as soon as he took charge of the, the just the penciling part, he was getting better issue after issue. You can see more control. And this is an important part of the story now is the resurrection. This is actually where we can see uh, this Electra being revived. Uh, definitely, I love the art. Johnson really did a fantastic job. This is issue number 190. Uh, I love it. I love the, the face. Gives you a story, a background story of Electra and how she became uh, the master ninja she was, the kill, uh, you know, the, the assassin. Uh, it's just uh, gorgeous. The art. It really gives a, a backdrop of the story of Electra and her mindset. That's what I love about Frank. You know, he did in the story. He really concentrated on that. It's not about just talking about the the events that's happening now. He's going into the back, into the background. He's going into the past. He's going into the reasoning behind why these characters are doing what they're doing. He is really uh, working in that sense into building a universe in itself. Um, I think that's an important element for comic books. I think comic books uh, and all the comic book writers, and if you are aspiring to be a comic book writer, is that you have to concentrate on the stories more than trying to concentrate on the art. A lot of people I say, I've seen so many kids, they want to be artists, they want to do art, and not many people want to be writers. And, you know, yes, I understand the implications because sometimes art, you know, writers really don't get the appreciation. Um, uh, and if you can do both, it's great, uh, beautiful, this way he's, he's done here. And as you can see, Electra right there with the white um, outfit, beautiful. And I love this cover here, right there's Frank Miller actually in number 191, issue 191. He does goes back to the art. I love the way he did here. I love his art on this cover. But this is one of the most famous, if not the most famous, uh, famous uh, in this case issue of this run. It's this one. And the art, the experimenting of the art is great. And here you can see the devil play, playing Russian roulette. And this one, it goes back to their devil and his state of mind. It is a very dark, but it really goes inside the mind of this. Uh, this was extremely controversial when it came out. But as you can see, uh, Frank Miller has always been very, very controversial uh, in the way he does things. He explores issues that other people don't want to explore. He talks about certain things. He gives certain reasoning to a lot of things. You know, I really like Frank. I honestly, 
I did not appreciate Frank Miller as much as I, as I do now, now that I'm older. I can appreciate more of his writing and his state of mind. Uh, I mean, I've been able to, uh, back in, you know, so many years ago, barely 10 years ago, I was not really too much into it. I always thought he was over overpraised, you know, over considered. Uh, the people, you know, lift them too high. But now that I'm older, I can see that. But not for the reason is that a lot of people do. It, to me, the stories of their devil and all the, the stories that Frank Miller has done had nothing to do in my case because of the dark tone. It's not that like I'm a fan of dark tone stuff. I'm a fan of well written, well structured stories. And, and I, I can say that. And he gives a reason. Actually, he goes to the the, the 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 motives that motivate. Uh, in this case, um, you know, um, you know, Matt Murdock, uh, the daredevil, to become the daredevil. Uh, it really explores reasonings, and there's something that you have to really know to really understand the character and to really fall in love with the character. And as you can see right there, what if? Of course, uh, it is fantastic. Uh, I really enjoy this book. I definitely highly recommend it. The stories that are written there, um, what you have. There is a lot of pluses in this book, and as you can see right there, I like the extras. As you can see, uh, it gives you some extra cover art, uh, extra art by, you know, in this case, by a Frank Miller, a lovely. Uh, it gives you a lot of, uh, you know, drawings. Uh, fantastic, uh, as you can see right there. And I love this. I think just for the to have this interview and to read it through, it's one of the the main reasons why you should buy this book. I like the interview between uh, the Frank Miller and Klaus Johnson interview done by Peter uh, Sanderson. It's fantastic. It has a bunch of pages. Uh, and they go on detail. Uh, it's really a lot of really nice information. Uh, it's not a new, it, it happened during that time. So it's a very old interview. But it really shows, uh, you know, it presents a lot of information that is very, um, is very nice to know. And information that really kind of presents the state of mind of, in this case, Frank Miller during that time. And even jo Johnson, really, uh, how they were working together, uh, how they were coming up with ideas for the book. Uh, really lovely, and I like the this the extra covers here without the you know the colors. Uh, it, it, it just fantastic. I like that the extras are given, and here Daredevil 190. There's thumbnails by Frank Miller, color guides by Klaus Johnson. He gives you a guide. This is good for those that are aspiring to be artists and want to know how to operate, how to do art. It really kind of help you out. It really kind of shows you how they plan, how they do things, how they draw it, how they uh, you know they created some of the the elements, how they the you know they pretty much this you know the basic. Um, ideas how the art came through and everything so it's, it's fantastic it is it, it really helps a lot to those that want to know the want to follow in the footsteps of this great artist and as you can see right there the face of Electra beautiful face beautiful colors well here is uh, you know pretty much uh, some drawings uh, of the Marvel Universe for the official handbook done by Frank Miller uh, I really like that it gives you some other extras you know there's a bunch of extras a lot of covers uh, a lot of um, uh, promotional art. Uh, it's really fun to just to have all this, to see all of this, and and really right there, the, the from the visionaries, the the, pray, uh, the paper traybacks, uh, fantastic right there. Um, really, I love this one. Definitely a nice, nice, nice uh, poster. In retrospective, do I recommend this book? Yes, yes, I do. I think if, if you are a Marvel fan, if you are a Daredevil fan, if you are a Frank Miller fan, uh, if you are a fan of the classic runs of the 80s uh, or the late 70s, I think you should have this. Uh, it's really one iconic book. It's an iconic run. It includes all the issues that were dumped by Frank Miller back in the early 80s. Uh, definitely is a book that you should have in your collection. Uh, if you haven't read it, I, I recommend you to read it. If you have read it before, if you're a fan of that but you don't have it, I recommend you to get it right now. It's the best time to get it price-wise. Uh, I think this is being the reprint. There's plenty out there, and I've seen it going for around $50, $60. I'm sure you can even find it for around less than $50, around $40 if you really look for um, definitely a classic book, a classic run. The book is fantastic, has a lot of extras. Uh, it really presents Frank Miller at his best uh, during that time. As a young writer, uh, I think he has improved. Personally, I hear in some of the stuff he has done over the years. Uh, after this, of course, there is a companion. I don't have the companion, but hopefully I can get it soon. Hopefully they reprint it. If not, I'm going to have to get it in the aftermarket or I have to find a friend that is willing to sell it to me for a good price. 
um, so I can explore it. But I have read the other stories, and I'm gonna probably put, you know, have some links and some videos for the stories that are included in the omnibus and the companion omnibus. Uh, in this case, Born Again, that was done in, in 1986, uh, 1986, and it's a classic that continues the story of their devil. And then, um, you know, Men Without a Fear, that was done in the early 90s, and actually, it's one of those stories that really uh, cements uh, a lot of things. Uh, it goes back, and it's a uh, it kind of expands on the history of their devil and his motives and the reason why he became their devil and the artist by Ramita definitely those are important books and stories that you have to read uh, and so I'm gonna have those links so for you have some reviews uh, but hopefully in the future sometime in the near future I can review that on uh, the companion book for you to see uh, if you really are young you're young and I know my, a lot of my followers are very young and they don't really have as much experience with these older books I recommend you to give it a try, uh, really to sit down and read. No, don't just look at the art. One thing about Frank Miller is that his art, his uh, expression is art. The way he does abstract art, it might not be the most flattering for a lot of people nowadays, uh, but the way he does it really um, works well with the writing. His story and the art, they go hand in hand. And he emphasized, in this case, the character more than he emphasized the backgrounds. He emphasized more the story uh, than he does uh, other things or small details. I think that's that's something that we can learn. I think that if you are aspiring to be an artist, you can learn a lot from that. The storytelling he does not only with his words, but certainly he does with his art. So I highly recommend it. I'm very excited for the show that is coming soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'm probably going to have a review of the show uh, in Netflix. Uh, you know, it's really, I'm excited for it. I think, you know, it's a lot of great things coming for Daredevil fans. And hopefully we can see more of this character that we all love. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. And thank you for being part of my, uh, of my followers, being part of the, my viewers every week or every, every time I review something. Thank you. I really appreciate your support and hopefully we can grow together. And if you have a channel, just let me know. Also, I, uh, you know, I, I'll be glad to help you grow your channel. Uh, I'll see you on the next review. Have a good day, good afternoon, or ha have a good evening. Thank you, my friends.